welcome to another episode of The Stitch Sessions. I'm very fortunate to be still here in Salisbury and I met uh, another fellow fiber artist and this is uh, the lovely Alita and she does crochet rugs among many other artistic things. So we're going to chat all things crochet, crafting, arts and all kinds of really uh, cool things. So. As always, super excited to have you guys along. Make sure you grab a work in progress, your favorite beverage, and stick around with us for a little while. And remember to click that subscribe button so you stay up to date on all of our future tutorials and more Stitch Session conversations. So in the meantime, stay tuned for our conversation with Alita. <laughs> on a super scarf which I will be having actually a tutorial coming up for this in a few weeks as we get into fall and Miss Alita you're working on a rug. New baby rug? Yes. So um, let's talk a little bit about how you make these rugs because it's not out of typical yarn. No. Um, one of the fun things about making rugs out of fabric is usually it's free. <laughs> um, everybody's got um, sheets that are worn out, uh, t-shirts, uh, dresses, all that stuff can be incorporated into rugs. And it's, um, so it's basically free or almost free. You yeah, can buy it's very these. economical. Yes, you can go buy these at, at thrift stores also, but usually you end up having a lot of friends give you things like that because they think it's neat that they don't have to throw it away. And uh, you end up with a thousand sheets in your house. I mean, they take over and piles of fabric and you have to have that because you never know what you want to make next. Yeah. And I, I did uh, two custom rugs this year. So, I mean, it was a challenge. I had to go see if I had those colors of fabric and mm. it, it's always, you know, it's like the thrill. I don't have to go out and buy anything for this. I've already got it. Uh, you can look through your stash. Yeah, so you have a stash and, you know, you can get tote bins and to store it. And the neat thing right. about your totes that you put your fabric in, you can take the lid off and use it as your work table and it goes with you, portable. Actually, you let's just lift this. Surface. Let's lift this up so maybe we can we can show people. So this is our, how, I guess it depends on how big you want to make it. Right. Um, and actually it's really nice and sturdy and uh, like you said a beginner can do these mm -hmm. stitches or single crochet so that's chain fantastic. Stitch and single crochet yeah. and this is all um, this particular one's all poly cotton sheets um, you know some so how did you get into uh, crochet rugs and your uh, company is called three sisters rugs to riches rugs to riches <laughs> I think this is and, so fantastic and three of course the three sisters it's just perfect for us so how did you get into making the rugs um well my grandmother made braided rugs she made room size rugs to and sold them at the time well this was the 60s she made she would make a huge rug like 12 foot oval rug wow all by hand yeah a hundred dollars she had a big <sighs> long oak rectangular table and she did all her work there on that table so of course she taught me how to do this my mother crocheted but her hands were too bad to work with fabric and that's yeah. what happens sorry but it does hurt your hands after a while um so i i learned how to braid rugs but Here's the problem. If you're going to take this with you, which you always want a portable craft, right. um, if you're doing a show or something, you, this is easy to take. When you're braiding, you have three balls on the floor, and they're braiding themselves together as you oh. braid this. So every three or four stitches, you've got to stop, unbraid your balls. And you don't want your balls of, of fabric laying on concrete or dirt when you're out doing an event. So it's a little bit more cumbersome. Yeah. It, yes. And, and this yeah. is just much easier to take. Also... As you're crocheting, you are you are crocheting this rug together. There's no stitching involved. Yeah. I mean, that is really laborious. I actually fixed a rug that was over 100 years old. Thank heaven it was a small wow. braided rug. And it was the grandmother's. And I think I spent uh, nine hours on this small rug i almost i had to com almost completely re-sew that rug oh wow and i'm like this is why i don't do braided rugs 
so crocheting was a little bit more attractive yes, to you. Yes, just for me because I like that it's it's done. And it's it's being built it. as you yes, work it. Yes, exactly. Yeah, the yeah, whole yeah, yeah. construction of it yeah. and being able to see, um, you know, as you go. And also, um, I do not sew my fabric together. Um, you know, when you do a, a, a braided rug, you have to cut your your bias. You've got to cut like a bias. So um, your your strands really have to be refined, so right. to speak. Yes, exactly. But okay. this, I, I hand knot them. This is the old way of doing it, and the way when people didn't have sewing machines. Okay. And they maybe didn't want to sit there and hand sew this. So these are knotted. It's just like a little cut a little slit, and you put one tail one piece in, and feed the tail through the hole, and just pull it into like a little. I don't know, so this is what stitch. they would call fabric yarn. Yeah, um, or rag yarn. Rag, you know, rag. It's it's I call you know, most people call them rag rugs because they used to make them out of all the scraps. Right. Nothing was wasted. Yeah. You know, anything yeah. was cut up and put into quilts or rugs um, in the 1800s. And actually, this probably didn't start until the middle of the 1800s when oh. the fabric became more available. Obviously, if you had to spin and weave your own fabric. You're probably not going to put it into a rug. You'll put it into probably a quilt not. or something. Yeah. Um, but this was nice for the longer pieces of fabric they could save. Then they started doing the rag rugs. And um, the picture, when I'm doing this, the picture in my mind is always of our early pioneers mm -hmm. that lived in a low, dark cabin with a dirt floor in a lot of cases till they could put a wood floor down. And this might have been the only spot of color in their house. Yeah. And this was like, this is home now. I have my rug on the floor. And a way to have a little bit of artwork. Yes. Yeah, I mean, if you can necessarily afford to go to galleries and things like that. And this was also another way to add a splash of color yes. and a little bit of artwork into your home. I, I've always said um, that rugs are art for the floors. And that you that. should consider that, whether you make or, or buy one, mm -hmm. that this is something you'll be looking at every day and it's a big part of your home. But even if you have a formal home, you can put these in your bathroom or kitchen or uh, utility room or office. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've sold, um, I think, probably at least three that I know of that went into offices. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, you know, it's just like, I have to work here, but this is my little cozy yeah. deal to make this less of a So you've been place. doing this quite a while. Like, did you ever go through a period of time where you take a break? You, take a break? <sighs> you know, as artists, sometimes we go through dry spells um, and we do other things. Yeah. Because Alita <laughs> is also an actress and a singer oh, yeah. and a dancer. <laughs> Yeah. So, did you find that a painter and a painter. painter? Lucky me, I'm encountering all these cool artists. But did you ever come across a time when you kind of went through a dry period? Maybe you veered into your other art forms, or have you always crocheted straight through? Mm -hmm. um, well, since I started doing this, actually, and I started selling them, I have to work pretty steadily to keep enough stock to sell because. We have, um, but have you done? Have you done this always? Oh um, no! I only started this. Oh uh, my gosh, less. I I think maybe nine years ago. Okay. I had made that made them myself, but nobody showed me how to do anything. And ah. when you're doing a rectangle, any of them, oh, yeah, whatever. There are tricks. Yeah, and mine were always, you know, all weird looking. So I took a class with somebody and she showed us a couple little tricks of the trade. And then I also had a, a book on rug making that I went back over since I understood a little more. Yeah, then I yeah, could, yeah. I could interpret it better. Mm. But I'm not good with direction. So basically anything I make is, is my own mind, whether it's a hat well, or whatever. That's what makes it truly artistic, mm -hmm. right? And I really haven't had a dry spell other than the mandatory ones where the doctor said six weeks don't pick up anything you know what about your hands i know some of us kind of have issues with arthritis yes. in the hands do you find that that affects you at all or oh you yeah okay i would say with any kind of art it's work it's a it's work people don't think it is but yeah you are using a part of your body constantly whether Absolutely. you're painting or you're making a rug um, the thing about this, it's so addictive. I've often sat for eight hours and worked steadily, maybe gotten up two times. You don't do that. Please, <laughs> please stop after about a half don't an do hour. Don't do what Alita does. Yes, because you're going to develop arthritis in your hands, especially yeah. in this part, and then you get nerve damage, which yeah. is what happened to yeah. me. Yeah. So, so take breaks. Take breaks. Really. Set the timer if you yeah. have to. Just save your hands because you it'll kill you if you have to give up making something you love. Yeah. Really. So, um, what is it that you find so addictive about 
crocheting and crocheting rugs in particular because it seems like this mm -hmm. is your passion. Well, first so of all, tell me more about that. Um, it's it's pick, choosing the fabric, getting colors you like together, and then putting them together, deciding how many rows of this I'm going to do, how many of that. Um, do I have enough fabric to do it this way? But you have to get it started. For me, I want to see all my colors one time, mm -hmm. all my colors I chose, and make sure I like what's happening there. And sometimes I'll make kind of a drab rug and I'll throw in some pops of color just to be a little bit bodacious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we don't want to get it too boring. Yeah, yeah. I like if I'm doing a mixed color rug. But um, I just think it's really, it's, it's a, the bad thing about it, you can sit there and do this while you're watching TV and everything. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, it's easy to sit there and not realize how many hours you've been working on this without a break. So I just love seeing what it are, come together. What are the... Um, What's a, what's a benefit that you find from crocheting, from using this as an art form? I mean, I, we, we'll talk about in a second about singing and acting, mm -hmm. but what is it about crochet that uh, I does think, it bring uh, to you? Well, I, make, I do work with yarn. I make hats and scarves and other little funky things, but I don't enjoy it the way I, I like the way the fabric feels. Mm -hmm. I like, um, I like uh, seeing the textures come together if I do different textures. Uh, it's just, I guess it's more tactile, mm. you know, your hand, I, to me, I like the way it feels. I don't like the way yarn feels in my hand. Even yeah. in the winter, for me it's a winter thing, I can tolerate it in the winter, but I can't even handle yarn in the it's summer. It's so true, and of course there's different uh, different fibers, different mm -hmm. textures, like in the summer a lot of us do uh, crochet projects with yarn, yes. uh, or much finer um, the, the fibers. The delicate, yes. Because delicate. yeah, nobody wants to be sitting in, uh, you know, 30 degree, well, this is Canadian Celsius <laughs> weather, or like today, I think we're sitting at what, 100 Fahrenheit? Yes. Like that's darn yes. hot. Nobody wants to be sitting with, with wool or mm -hmm. yarn. No. So I totally, uh, mm -hmm. totally understand that. So uh, sticking with the artistic side of you, mm -hmm. tell me a little bit more about your singing and acting and how, you know, that as an art also kind of turns your crank, so to speak. Well, I, I think from what I've found out and the people, the different artists i met, many artists have their, their multiple... Um, disciplines? Yes, yeah, disciplines. I want to say media, like it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's the same thing. Um, and this is good to have as an artist because you might be working with the band. Well, the band goes, and then there's nobody to work with. Well, of course, you're so depressed, you can't do anything because... <laughs> It's like for a runner getting out and run, or yeah. you get out and sing, or you're dancing, or you're painting. Um, it when you are at the point where you're getting paid for your work, mm -hmm. be, that's wonderful because yeah. it's not that you would you uh, would enjoy it any less if you weren't, but it's just it's just knowing that other people want your work and you know it's got you know it's appreciated. Somewhere. But the the singing I've always been a singer ever since I was a child. But I never had any formal training until um, after my, I got married. And my husband said, you know, you really, I, I, I really want you to have voice lessons. Mm. And so then I studied classical music, which I love because I love opera. Then the arias and oh. Mozart. And, and I learned um, phonetically to sing in German, Norwegian, Spanish, French. Um, wow, English, old English, Middle English, whatever. Would you say you could speak any of those language? uh, the no, languages? Or no, it's phonetic. Yeah, it's so it's you're you're memorizing the... The sounds of the, the how letters, letters, how the letters are pronounced in okay. the language. And, and Italian, of course, is wonderful. All singers love Italian, but they put like 10 consonants per note, <laughs> which is really tricky. It, there's a lot going on there, yes, right? Yes, but... What was your favorite language to sing in? Uh, I probably Italian, yeah. just because uh, the flow. I love German, mm. but German songs are not, they're not really beautiful. They don't sound as romantic. No, and they tend to be, and Northern and Southern people are like this. German, it tends to be a darker, a lot of the mu music is, uh, not all of it, I mean, mm -hmm. look at Mozart, he's, yeah. you know, his music, but a, a lot of it tended to be darker than the Italian pieces that I, I did for some reason. Yeah, it's so, it's so true. What, um, I saw an opera years ago, and it was The Flying Dutchman. Oh, okay. 
I, and I think it was a German opera. Really, really depressing. Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, everything. But it's basically about a, uh, a ship that goes down. Yes. That's so, one of the Flying Dutchman was the one that you went to when you went to David Jones' one. The, the, the Flying Dutchman was the, the ship. Okay. The sailors okay. talk about a lot. Yeah. Now, if you had to choose between singing and acting. Singing. Okay. Of course. So um, tell me what... What are the extra points that would push you more towards singing over acting? I just I know you enjoy acting. I just I, acting is a lot of fun, but singing is like is part of your life, you know. Like I, there's been a lot going on the last few years, and I hate to say, but I have not been singing. Mm. And of course, when I quit working with the theater group, I didn't have to. So I don't know. Maybe it was part of that depression I talk about when you lose one thing, you sort of go into another one. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I never, I used to be singing when I was cleaning the house and all these great shows and operas and whatever. And now, I'm, I mean, people used to say, oh, I, thought, I heard you singing outside. And I said, I'm sorry, go, no, don't stop. We wait and listen to see what you're singing. <laughs> Would you say you find singing comforting? I, um, it, I don't know if it's comforting or not because it's, uh, um, it's anything else. You have to... You have to do it well if you're going to be satisfied with it. When mm -hmm. you do it well, it's very comforting. When mm. you feel like this is how it's supposed to sound. Yeah. Otherwise, it's like pure work. And I know I can do this while I'm getting this out today. Yeah. Um, now, would you take um, any of your uh, crochet projects along on, on theater? Oh, my God. Like, no. you know, in between. No. A lot of times it's hurry up and wait no. when you're rehearsing. Because you're constantly looking at your script. Okay. No, no. Okay. You think you're comfortable and you go on stage, you're going to mess up. So, okay. I'm so there's a wreck when I'm there was on. really no time to kind of have this as a little buffer oh, between no, no. scenes or whether you're singing or dancing or acting, you're going to be working on something when you're backstage. And mm -hmm. um, it was the same way when I was a dancer because I um, I was a wreck backstage. There was no way I could have done anything. Mm -hmm. So it's um, you, you have to be focused. That's what it is. And focus. take break your focus, and you may really regret it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially if people are paying to see you perform. Well, that's an added pressure, yes. right? You want to be sure that it's as good as anything yeah. that you would pay, um, you know, a hundred or two hundred dollars a ticket for, no matter whether it's community theater or dinner theater or whatever. Well, you always want to put your best. Do your best. Forward. Yes. And I guess it's just like in when you um, put together your projects for your shows, like you also do. Uh, is it craft fairs and things yes. like that? Yes, yes. We try to do as many local craft fairs as we can because um, in this area, it's not a metropolitan area, and we don't really have many places to sell our art. Okay. We're lucky enough to get into Ward Museum, as I okay. said, and have our things there. So when we're sitting here making something, they're selling something for us, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. But you got to have extra product then because mm -hmm. they have to have so much and you have to have enough for your show. So yeah. this is what I say. There's not much break time when you're selling rugs because they can take. Now, listen, if I could sit here and do eight or ten hours like I would like to, I yeah. could finish this in two days probably. Um, after so I have you, it cut. Now, if cut. you were to stop here, for example, like let's say this is a doormat. Mm -hmm. Or a cat rug. Or a cat I, rug. I call them cat So rugs. how how quickly can you whip something like that up? Oh gosh, um, in less than a day. I mean, less than a day, maybe oh, a half great. a day. If, but I can't do it anymore. I really have to stop and take the break. pace yourself. Yes. And and in general, this is kind of one of the main pieces of advice we give to people: is mm -hmm. make sure you pace yourselves. And um, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day, and That's neither right. was you know. Uh, your masterpiece. Maybe That's it's right. going to take take a while. Um, I'm actually. I would love to show everybody some of your other pieces of work okay. here. Um, I noticed that you like to use lots of vibrant color, which oh, yes. I adore. So yes. um, show us some of your pieces. Well, this is one of my favorites, and it's oh, my yeah. colors. And I love this. a lot of people are afraid of color. And they I are. must tell you, if you look outside, do you see beige and gray? No, you do not. <laughs> so I like to put all the colors of nature and world. Oh, that's gorgeous. The natural ones and the ones we have, have created. Oh, so look at that. That is absolutely beautiful. So this one is done in the round. Yes, and this is made out of sheets also, but these are like bed sheets. sheets. Yes, they're cotton. Isn't that fantastic? They're, it's like the fabric your turtlenecks are made of, but they have sheets like 
like this. Wow, and this is really sturdy. And, and then soft. Um, you can just throw these in the washer. You can wash, put them right? in the washer. Uh, I like to wash mine on more of a gentle, gentle cycle. cycle. Yeah. But you can pre treat them. You can also pre soak them. Oh, great. And then you can do a rinse and go ahead and, and put them on gentle. And I throw them in the dryer for a short time mm -hmm. and then take them out and you can re-block them because sometimes okay. they'll get out of shape. Yeah. Hang them over the top of your door or if you're lucky enough to have a clothesline like I do, you can yeah. put them out there and then you can make sure that you're shaping them mm -hmm. the, so it dries and the, the rectangle's not all cockeyed. And yeah, everything. yeah. All right. I love that one. But this is, anyway, this, um, this other one, one, this is there. a rectangle and I also did a round one. Um, the, uh, these are not my colors, I have to tell you, and uh, it's actually painful for me to do this. Oh, you're kidding. No. Is it because the, the gray, gray, the gray does not help gray, gray. But, but it really brightens things up with the yellow. That's fantastic. And this is made out of cut up t-shirts and turtlenecks. Oh, that's great. See, the, the other thing I really love about what Alita does is everything is upcycled and reused. Recycled. So, um, Depression parents and child of the 60s. So I had two generations. <laughs> We were all into, uh, you know, the the uh, Greenpeace and all mm -hmm. that, and mm -hmm. saving the planet, and it was a Mother Earth time, hippies, yeah. all that, you know, that yeah, good yeah. stuff. We got back to nature in the '60s. Yeah, and I think that's so great. it's. Uh, now I noticed you've got something a little different here. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about this. This, this is, is a super cute. cute. This is a drawstring bag, and it's actually made this. You would think this doesn't take much fabric to make this. This is an entire sheet. Oh wow! Entire, I think it's probably a twin size, but you're better if you can go with a full size. And the bottom and the straps are gingham. So oh, it's that is cute. so cute. And this has got long shoulder straps, and then it's just got a little drawstring. And I did not put a liner in here because of the extra expense it would have mm -hmm, added. Mm -hmm. But you don't really need a liner, especially if you use a bag like this. You want to put your stuff in a little like zipper container so you can just pull that out and get your phone or your yeah. makeup or whatever. Um, so you can really use um, fabric yarn for... Several other it's types of projects. It doesn't have to be rugs, but it just so happens you that. You can do mats for the table and little right. palm holders. And um, I got some macrame. What do you call it? It's not yarn. Macrame. Oh, uh, um, macrame string. Yeah, yarn. whatever. It's it, it's got. It almost has like a plastic looking yeah. fiber. So I had these balls of it in this box at an auction, and I made um, I had beige, and then I had red, and I made heart shaped. I guess about 12 oh, inches. So sweet. They were so cute for a table. And the woman said, do you have more? And I'm like, no. <laughs> it was Christmas. I'm thinking, I just well, love that'll tell you, you should make more this year. But yeah. I, but to buy macrame uh, fiber, it's yeah. too expensive yeah. to buy. It, so, it can be. It can yes. be. Yeah. Um, so, you know, basically, if you're buying and reselling, there's an awful lot of time in this. I, I'd mm -hmm. say just cutting up the fabric can take a month sometimes because it's so it really is a, you gotta have it, it's it's a work of passion so yes. so it's you got to do it because you really enjoy it just like some of us that use like i'm not a big fan of using wool uh i like using more of the acrylics and the cottons just yes. because for me wool is itchy so it's if i'm making something itchy. for myself I tend to stay away from wool, but some people adore working with wool. Mm -hmm. um, just like fabric yarn, it's not for everybody, but it does create some really cool and different types mm -hmm. of textures. So if you're into experimenting and want to try out some really neat things, um, I say you should try try one of these projects once. Yes. Now, because it's a bit bulkier, what size of hook do you generally use well, for this project? This I have used an O and a P, but this I found Which, my favorite. For those, in, for those of you that are not familiar, uh, it is a ten millimeter hook. Yes. Um, and fifteen slash fifteen. N or fifteen. Says. So it's. Um, a bulkier type of hook, yes. it's a, a larger hook. I can't get that out. Um, oh, have something that's in the bag. Okay. There, I'm going to show the difference. There are plastic hooks and there are... This no. is important, yeah. But I will tell you, let me find one of my little plastic ones here. I love these different cases, these clear ones, you can see everything. It makes it a lot easier. Not that I can get to it, but here is... Um, okay. Let's see. No, I can't oh, even read. One. I think that's still an N. It might be an O. That one is super hard to see. Oh, this one is a P, which is that an is 11 11.5 millimeter. That's hook. what I started yeah. with. And I like it just fine. 
But my sister was working on flannel, and she wasn't used to the, the how hard that is mm. when you start getting it really tight. Yeah. And she's just pulling. She snapped, snapped one it. right in I've half. I've done that. And we were doing a class. She had to leave and go to Walmart to get another hook before the class was over. So the metal is not going to break. Yeah. Metal so, or I know bamboo has become very popular. So not plastic, I would no. say. For well, something it, like no, this. I, probably not. I mean, not a plastic can, hook. I have them, and you can try. You can use them. And you may never have it snap. It could have been just a weakness in that, but we know the metal's not going to. And, uh, you know, this is like a dollar nineteen. It's, yeah, they're very Walmart. risky. Walmart. <laughs> yeah. Walmart or Michael's. Here you guys have Joanne's. So no, Michael's, I think, is quite a bit higher. It yeah. Might, might double almost. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're doing a class or something and you're buying a bunch of these, you want to keep your price down too. Yeah. And the same with with yarn. If you're going to try yarn, look in thrift shops. Yeah, Do that's thrift true. Shops in Canada. Yeah, yeah, we've got thrift shops. Yeah. And look there. Sometimes people have, you know, they'll be like me. They ruin their hands, <laughs> and all of a sudden yeah. they're like, I'm not doing this anymore. And they have bags, and you can find all kinds of neat, interesting textures. Just in never know. You just have to have the patience and the time and the mm -hmm. willingness to go and look. Yes. So, Alita. Tell us where people can find you online. We have a Facebook page called Three Sisters Rugs to Riches. So is it all one name? Three Sisters yes. Rugs to Riches? Yes. Yes. It's kind of um, in the card. It's got parentheses around the rugs and riches or quote, yeah, quotation marks. And do you have an official website? No, we do not have a website yet. Yeah. Um, okay. Just our Facebook page. But okay. we put the new stuff on there that we make, and we tell you where we're going to be. And so any of your upcoming shows? Stuff. And do you, have a, do you have a show coming up in the fall, maybe? Well, or, uh, um, we do have Third Friday downtown in September, if okay. it's not too hot. And that's rain. downtown Salisbury? Yes. Okay. And that's free to vendors, which is really nice. But you're, you know, out there. You can't have a tent there. Yeah. So you just, just called do Third it. Friday. Third Friday. And it's because it's every third Friday. Mm -hmm. Exactly. of the month yes so again you can find them on on facebook on three sisters rugs to riches and we have um a show we just found out got the date on today the wildfowl exposition at wood museum in salisbury and we'll be outside in the parking lot and we have other vendors inside as well oh so Fantastic. That, be, that was fun last year, except we froze. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> so make sure if you are in the Salisbury area to check out uh, Alita and uh, her other sisters yes. uh, and her artwork and her crafts and make sure to stop by and say hello. And I want to thank Definitely. you so much for taking the time oh, thank you. to sit and chat with me. Thank it's been a pleasure. So it has for me. And thank you. Thank you to all of you art lovers out oh. there. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this stitch session conversation. And if you have any questions, you know, you can always leave me a comment in the comment box down below. Or you can always get in touch with me directly at info at crochetcrafty.com. Uh, in the meantime, have a great day, happy crochet, and see you next time. Bye. Bye.